Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. This tutorial is going to be the first tutorial of a series that will now get into the more experimental features of WASP. And specifically what experimental features are, are the ones that have not yet, are not yet fully supported by the WASP core library, but which have been developed and implemented to test a little bit what the use of those are. And specifically in this video we are going to be looking at hierarchical aggregations. And what hierarchical aggregations are, are aggregations in which each individual part that composes this aggregation is not just a part in itself, but it's a part that is composed of smaller subparts which are uh, themselves aggregated in a first step and then joined together to create the larger part. And so what we're going to be seeing in this tutorial is we're going to be seeing how we can uh, create these hierarchical parts and then how we can navigate between the different hierarchy levels and access the different hierarchy level when we need them uh, the most. Let's get started. If you download the Rhino file that you will find in the description, you will find um, a little Lego brick inside it. And we're going to be using Lego bricks as I think they are a perfect example of what a hierarchical part is. So if you think about each individual Lego brick, uh, they are all of kind of shapes, but they are all fundamentally based of a single uh, one unit brick, which is just repeated in space in order to create the larger parts. So what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is we're going to be using this base brick as our base sub part and then we're going to be building all kind of Lego shapes using this and then aggregate them. So if you look in, at it cl uh, more closely you'll see that you have actually two geometries and one of them is in red is the um, the Lego brick itself is not exactly representing a Lego brick but it's pretty similar and then another one is just a simple box and that simple box is going to be the actual geometry of our part which we're going to be using for simplicity. And the reason for that, I've explained it in previous tutorials, is that topologically and geometrically these are identical uh, for the purposes of WASP, but uh, using a simple box of course speeds up our computation of uh, a factor. We're going to get started and select our simple block, so not the brick itself, and create a geometry component. Sorry. <coughs> Right click, set one geometry and select the block itself and then we can hide it afterwards. And so what we're going to do is we want to we want to create uh, two connections for each side, so two at the bottom and two at the top in order to allow not only the um, stacking of them but also the rotation of 90 degrees around each other. So to do that we're going to start by exploding the component, use the geometry using dbrep and this is going to allow us to extract all the faces and then I'm going to go through that and get with a list item the bottom face which should be element number four there you go now you see that we selected the bottom face and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to calculate an area component we're going to use a area component to get the center of that face and then from here we are going to be extracting, um, we are going to be creating two lines to define the direction of our connection. So I'm going to use a component called line SDL, which stands for start, direction and length. And so our start is going to be our point. And as we want to have two lines oriented in the two directions, we are going to create a unit X vector and a unit Y vector and plug both of them in there. So as you can see we're creating two lines in the two directions. So we can then use these lines to create our um, connections and we do that by going to the WASP tab Oops. there we go and going to elements and we get connection from direction and so move everything a bit down the geometry is going to be the geometry of our box the center we are going to just get an end point to get the end points of these lines so it's going to be the same number as the lines 
and then the up direction is going to be our lines. And then we are going to assign a type, and this, in this case the type of this is going to be bottom. We're going to then get all this, except for the deconstruct, so we get the whole block and copy paste it, lower, and then we're going to change this from 4 to 5, so that we're going to select the top face, and you see that automatically we will be creating the planes on the top, and we will also assign a different type and we call them top. Good. Now we're going to merge these two. and we're ready to create our part. So one important issue is that even if at this point we are not going to be using any input from the advanced parts, we need to always use advanced parts when we're use, working with hierarchical parts because that's always assuming that there's the possibility of adding an extra level of hierarchy. And hierarchy levels can be added only on advanced parts. So we go to parts, advanced part, we have to give a name and I'm going to give as a name brick, given that is our uh, base brick. The geometry of course is going to be our base geometry at the beginning. And then we're going to assign our connections. And last but not least, we also want to assign the uh, detail brick as an attribute in order to carry that along during aggregation. To do that, we're going to go to elements we can get a wasp attribute. I'm going to move it a little bit lower. I'm going to give it a name, which is going to be detail. Oops, sorry, detail. Okay. And then for the value, I'm going to create a geometry component. Right click, set one geometry, and go and select my detail brick. And lastly, I'm going to set the transformable input with a toggle and set it to true to tell to wasp that it needs to be transforming this attribute along. So I'm going to then take this attribute and connect it in the attribute input of our part. And here we go. We are ready with our part uh, to start building our subparts. Just to test that everything works, we can quickly create a stochastic aggregation. So we go to aggregation, stochastic aggregation. We connect our parts. We say that we want to, for example, create 50 parts for now. For the rules, we are going to be using a rule generator. We're going to connect our part. And then we want to specify a certain rule grammar, which is going to be that the top can connect to the bottom and the bottom to the top. So that the male female um, structure of the brick is, is uh, respected. So I'll create a panel, right click, uncheck multi-line data and then write my rules bottom to top and top to bottom. Connect them. That's going to create all my rules. And then I'm going to connect that there. And finally add my reset button. So if now I go and I get uh, get part geometry component, You'll see that what's happening, of course, is that we are creating simply a stack of vertical bricks. And if you think about it, that makes sense, because if you have just one unit Lego bricks, there's actually nothing else that you can build, because Lego bricks cannot connect on the side, but just on the top and bottom. So if we want to create more complex structures using Lego bricks, what we need to do is we need to create more complex parts. And that's where our hierarchical part will come into play. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to select all my aggregation and hide it for now and just grab it and move it up so that it doesn't disturb me. So if we want to build um, a more complex part, what we want to start doing is we want to start taking the individual basic unit and start transforming it in space by moving it and rotating it in order to create the uh, composite part or the hierarchical part as we call it. And if you remember from one of the very first tutorials, uh, we can do that using the transform part component. So what I'm going to do, for example, is I'm going to take a transform part, I'm going to connect my part, 
And if, for example, I would like to create a stick that is composed of five units, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a series. I'm going to say that the start point is zero. The step size is eight, as that's the size the, of the brick itself. And then I'm going to say that I want five values. Now you see that I have five values, which are spaced of eight units, each of them. And then I'm going to create with these values an x vector. And then from this x vector, I'm going to create a move transformation. So if you remember, when we saw in previous tutorials, when I use uh, any transformation component from uh, Grasshopper, I have the output of a transform geometry, but I also have the output of the actual transformation object that has been applied. And that's what we can use to transform a wasp part. So we transform this, and now we end up with five parts, and if we want to visualize them, we can go to parts, get part geometry, and see that we actually created our little five unit stick. And if we go and increase this, we can actually create larger or smaller sticks. Now, this works when we want to create linear sticks, but if we want to create um, more complex parts that have not like just a linear expansion, but also have other geometries, for example, an L-shaped Lego brick, we want to use a slightly more complex logic. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete the series for now and our X vector. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating uh, a panel. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building an XY matrix, which we're going to use to move our parts around. So I'm going to right click and check multi-line data. And if, for example, I want to move and I'm going to create a second panel, which is going to be my Y translation. So my X translation is going to be that, let's say, an L shape that is 4 by 2. It's going to be a component first move by 0, then by 1, then by 2, then by 3, and then once again by 3, so that it's the movement in the X. And if I want to do the Y, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, and the last one is the only one that is shifted. Might not be super clear right now, but you see that when we do it, you're going to understand. So now that we do, we create a unit X vector from this one and a unit Y vector from this one. And then we add this together. And finally, we take these vectors and we multiply them by eight in order to account for the actual size of the brick. If now we take this and plug it in here, you see that this one automatically creates for us the L shape. If now, for example, I would go and change this and put the last one to four, you see that the brick moves one forward. If I put the last one here at zero, the brick becomes a stick. So what I'm going to create, it is two parts. So one is going to be my L shape. That is what I've done before. And then later we're going to create also stick out of it. So now that we created our uh, L-shaped um, part, so that we position them in space, we are ready to actually build the, uh, the hierarchical part. So we're going to go on and go to WASP and get advanced part again. We should give it a name, and the name in my case is going to be L. Could be any name as always, it's just easy. So, and then since I need a bunch of information to create this component, what I'm going to be doing is instead of using just get part geometry, I'm going to go to parts and get the construct part, which is going to be giving me all the components that create this part. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take these five geometries and join them into a single geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a mesh union. to merge all of those meshes into a single mesh. For the connection, I have all the connections here. And all I want to do is I want to take them and connect them. And that's going to be creating all my connections automatically. So and it's going to be numbering them in, a, in the way that we need them to be numbered. And then the last thing we have to do is, if you remember, we also have stored in here an attribute and that attribute is the detailed geometry. And we want to also have that as a single one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to elements, 
deconstruct attribute and that's going to deconstruct it and give us the ID and the value and the value remember is a brep so instead of doing a mesh union we're going to do a solid union so we're going to connect that there right click and flatten the input so we're going to end up with one geometry and then we have to rebuild the attribute so we're going to go to elements attribute we are going to name it detail again we are going to connect our value and we are going to once again create a toggle and set it to true and then we're going to connect this attribute to the attribute input now we are almost done but the last thing that we are missing to do is that right now we created a part that is built out of those individual parts but we haven't added any information within the part about how it's actually being built so what we want to also store is we want to also store the individual parts and that's the whole point of a hierarchical aggregation in order to be able to further on retrieve them and then keep aggregating with this uh, lower level parts to do that we are going to go to experimental and get the component assembled part hierarchy so we bring it in our base part is going to be the part that we started from and then we have to assign the transformation that has been applied to them to create the hierarchy and this is going to create our hierarchy parts and we can then connect that to the hierarchy input of our brick now great this is if you see here this is how we build a hierarchical part what we can do now is we can just group all this to have it as a hierarchical part and then I can just grab it and copy paste it downer and then go and change the values to create a different part so for example I'm gonna create I'm gonna create a, a six unit stick now that we have these two parts we can merge them and we can then build a stochastic aggregation out of them so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go to wasp stochastic aggregation connect our parts we're gonna again generate our rules with the rule generator so that we don't have to worry what's the exact numbering of those parts and once again our grammar is going to be the same so it's going to be bottom to top and top to bottom and now here you will notice something that it's really important to keep in mind particularly if you're working with uh, field driven aggregation so whenever you start working with hierarchical parts and you start composing parts out of several subparts you have to keep in mind that the number of rules will grow really fast and that's not a problem at all when you're working with stochastic aggregation but of course when you're working with field driven aggregation it's gonna highly impact the performance of your um, of your structure we can then take our rules that are generated and connect them to the rules specify the number of parts and I'm gonna say for example that I want to have eight of them and lastly we're gonna create our button to reset the aggregation if now we go to the output and go to get part geometry we can see that we have been creating an aggregate oh something wrong we have to change the name of the second part and I'm gonna call it for example five times one if now we go and reset you see that we actually have a composition of those no we don't yeah we have a composition of the two different part types what we can also do is we can instead of getting the part geometry we can actually access the attribute that where we have the detail geometry and so we're gonna go to wasp get attribute my name and we are gonna get the attribute which is called detail
and this is going to be our actually detailed um, part geometry. What we can also do to visualize it better, we can first go to part and filter parts by name. And so I'm going to be calling the first one L. And then I'm going to pass that to the attribute and then create a, um, a custom preview. And then I can just copy this whole block down there, call this five times one, which is the name of the other part, and maybe change the color a bit. And so you see that now I get both of them. One little detail that you see is that we still see all the faces of that. And we can avoid that by going to our attribute here. And after the solid union, use a merge faces component. And we can do the same at the bottom. If I now I go on and reset, now I'm gonna actually have my nice polished geometries. Now, great, we created our aggregation, which is composed of these two types of parts. But now what if I wanna go back and start aggregating my very original brick on top of this geometry? Now we can do that. And we can do that by simply going and accessing the lower hierarchy level that is stored within this part. To do that, we can go to um, the experimental tab and go to get parts hierarchy. And so we're gonna plug our aggregation in there. And then we're gonna, here we have to specify the aggregation level. Now, if we ask for aggregation level zero, we're gonna be simply asking for the same aggregation that we can see here. While instead for every level of aggregation that we add, every number we step up, we go one level deeper within the hierarchy. In this case, we just have two levels. So the, levels, the level that we are seeing, which is level zero and level one, which is what we're gonna go and access. So if now you see what we have is in input, we had an aggregation with 80 parts. And in output, we have an aggregation with 438 parts, which are all the individual little bricks that we extracted. I can just go and visualize them to go in, by going to get part geometry and see that now I have this each individual brick separated. And then what we can do is we can go back at the very beginning of our file, get our stochastic aggregations that we had created using just our units, the one that was creating just little stacks, bring it in the, here in the forward, and then take our aggregation levels and plug them in the prev input. If now we go and reset, and we go and see what happens in the preview input, you see that what's happening is that we are adding new parts on top of the existing one. So what we can also do is instead of getting the part geometry is we can split the list in two and visualize just the new parts and not the parts that belong to the already aggregated parts. To do that, we can get a split list. Oops, sorry. Oops. We connect our part out there and then we use a list length to count how many parts are there inside our hierarchy. So it's 438, I'm gonna go there. And so now in the A input I have 438 and in the B output I have the 50 that I've added right now. Once again, instead of getting the geometry itself, we can go to attributes and say, get attribute by name. Take the B output and extract the detail attribute. And then once again, we can use a custom preview to visualize it.
So now you see that what I can do is I can go on and keep adding parts here that are going to be added on top of the original aggregation. But what I can also do is I can go back and reset the base aggregation, which is going to create a new one. And if I then come back and reset this one aggregation as well, I'm going to be growing on top of that. What's interesting is that the stochastic aggregation, the hierarchical aggregation structure that is built inside WASP, it's virtually limitless. So the same way in which we build these parts out of this brick, we could have built this brick out of, for example, its individual walls. And then what we could do here is we could navigate to level two and access those individual walls. So it's the structure is virtually limitless. You can add as many levels of aggregation as you want. Of course, the limit that you're going to hit at some point is just a computational limit that you're not going to be able to uh, calculate that anymore. At the same time, the interesting thing is that the hierarchy itself is not computed during aggregation. So having multiple level of hierarchy inside a part will not actually slow down the aggregation uh, algorithm because the aggregation is calculated exclusively after the aggregation within the aggregation, the uh, get part hierarchy component itself. So this is it for what I wanted to show you. I hope that it makes it a little bit clear how the hierarchical aggregation components work. If there's any question, feel free to leave comments or to write in the Discord chat and ask for any question. If you like the video, you can uh, click the like button and subscribe to this channel. There's going to be few new videos coming, not as regularly, but I'm also working on uh, a full Python tutorial for Grasshopper that is aiming at bringing you from zero to the ability of writing in simple Grasshopper plugins using Python. So if you want to keep updated with that, so subscribe to the uh, channel and hit the notification button and you're going to be notified as a new video comes out. So I hope you enjoyed the video and hope to see you soon back here and that's it. Bye.